introduce Gregory Munson. Um, well, he happens to live near me. I kind of see him once in a while. And um, he happens to be the um, first president of uh, the uh, society. And um, he's, I, I will say, he, for, for everybody who said it already, um, without Greg here, um, the work that he's done over the last couple of months to get this project, uh, this conference underway, uh, it wouldn't have happened uh, because all of us are in, on the board are kind of busy and uh, it uh, took a lot to work put this together, so thank you, Greg. Uh, but at any rate, Greg is going to talk about um, one of um, his and my favorite characters in Southwest archaeology, Jesse Walter Fuchs. He's uh, in some ways kind of a controversial guy, but uh, there's a lot of interesting things that he did at the turn of the 19th and 20th century. And um, Greg is going to talk about that. Thank you, Ray. You know, Ray's name is on here too, so it's part of his fault. <laughs> Uh, Jesse Walter Fuchs was uh, one of the Southwest's first ethnographers and archaeologists, but he was actually born in uh, Newton, Massachusetts in 1850. Uh, his uh, education was a doctorate in marine zoology from Harvard University in 1877. Just a thing for the Southwest. Hmm? I say just a thing for the Southwest. <laughs> marine uh, zoology really applied to the Southwest, yes. And uh, he did pass away in Forest Plain, Maryland at the uh, 1930 at the age of 80. Some of his major accomplishments were that he was one of the uh, second leaders of the Hemingway expeditions uh, after Augustus Hemingway. Uh, he conducted ethnographic studies in the 1880s and 1890s among the uh, Hopi people. And in 1892, one of the things that's really unknown is everybody who knows about the 1893 World's Flaming Exposition in Chicago, right? Well, there was a companion exhibit. Madrid, Spain, at that time, where he was from, in the general vicinity. So um, he was actually a curator of the uh, Columbian Exposition in Madrid, Spain, in 1892. It wasn't until about the turn of the century that he uh, came into the Southwest. He had an avid interest in the Southwest while traveling through it by train. And uh, that's when he began uh, doing his studies and then became what uh, would be a self-trained archaeologist in the, uh, in the Southwest. His uh, excavations he began in uh, Casa Grande Ruins National Monument, what we now know as Casa Grande, uh, the Bay House there. Uh, he did extensive excavations at Mesa Verde National Park from 1908 to 1920. Uh, he also came through Wapaki in the National, old National Monument areas in 1810. And uh, he spent a lot of time in Mexico and the Caribbean doing ethnographic studies. He did studies in Wheaton Island in Florida. And he was the chief of the Bureau of American Ethnology from 18, 1918 to 1928. He took over from, uh, what's, Powell, <laughs> John Leslie Powell. <laughs> <laughs> Probably one of the things he's known uh, locally for is that he did conduct the excavation of the stabilization at Eldon Pueblo in the Flagstaff area in 1926 and 1928. Now, I'm not going to stand here and try and extol the virtues of Jesse Walter Fuchs as an ethnographer. Like uh, Ray was saying, he's quite controversial. A lot of the methods and techniques and what he did back in those days, um, as to do definitely through today's lens, would be considered inappropriate. But, as Vernon said last night, Vernon Masiesta said, we cannot dwell in the past. We have to learn from the past and move forward. Continue the race, get to the end, get our reward. One of the things Jesse Walter Fuchs did do was keep copious notes and records, photographs, correspondence. Upon his death, the executive of state scooped it all up and took it to the Smithsonian Institution. His records now reside at the National Anthropological Archives at the Smithsonian Institute out of Maryland. There, they uh, have 
the collections from the major southwestern archaeologists, the manuscript collections, the photograph and artwork collections, the sound and video recordings. Uh, Jesse Walter, Walter Fuchs's collections at the Smithsonian is uh, MS 4408, which is his manuscript collection, uh, 4321, which is his photograph collection, and uh, the artifact collection is in the uh, Smithsonian material collection. I became involved with uh, Jesse Walter Fuchs's records when I led a as project director and evaluation of the architecture of Sun Temple at Mesa Verde National Park. This was a follow-on to Kim Malville's work. I uh, wanted to look at the architecture from an archaeologist standpoint. At that time, I was uh, under the tutelage of Larry Nordby, chief research archaeologist at Mesa Verde. He was my uh, the project's uh, architectural archaeological consultant, and Brian Bates was our uh, archaeoastronomy, cultural astronomy. Uh, consultant on the project. Uh, part of what I wanted to do was go through the archival records and I got a grant from the Ballantine Family Fund in Durango to travel back to the Smithsonian and to do an inventory of all of Jesse Walter Fuchs's records. Uh, it ended up being an Excel spreadsheet of over 1,500 lines uh, with all a listing of all of his notes and uh, notebooks and photographs. One of the things we found back there was the original field map of Sun Temple. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that up until very late, its name was not Sun Temple. Its name was Cliff Pueblo. That name changed probably in October of 1915. At that time, Fuchs was beginning to get an idea that maybe these were uh, astronomically or had something to do with uh, sun rays. So, in some ways, we might be looking at uh, Jesse Walter Fuchs as maybe the father of uh, Southwestern archaeoastronomy. Uh, he also had all of his field notebooks back in the uh, Smithsonian. Uh, lots of information in these notebooks. One of these we did find was a couple of uh, pages in his uh, field notebooks. Uh, here, you'll see he's a very good artist, did great sketch maps annotated sketch maps. <clears throat> and in this particular one, when I was look, reviewing it, there was a comment on the opposite page here. Frank found prayer sticks in room C. Room C is this room right here. It's one of the few that has an entrance into the center of Sun Temple. So, you know, that was intriguing because there was a contribution Fuchs made to the uh, Holmes anniversary issue that figured two prayer sticks that were found uh, he says, from Sun Temple. And so in the inventory going through the artifact collection of the Smithsonian, uh, we came across a number of these kinds of sticks. But I looked at these two and found that because of the way he was such a good artist, he represented that crack and this crack, which confirms that these are the same sticks. So we have confirmed the only two artifacts that have been excavated from Sun Temple. Now, what are these? Uh, Fuchs's interpretation is that these are uh, male and female form. Uh, Larry Nardby associates them with bestowing blessings on the architecture. He calls them architectural bubbles. Uh, but what I want to know from you folks is what is your interpretation? What can you tell us about? Because they are found in droves in the same form all over Mesa Verde. These two drawers are found in the Colorado History uh, Collection. You can even find, see some of them in place in balcony house between the walls. So they are important items. So we have to work on figuring out what those are. Another, uh, a lot of other artifacts that we found there I photographed. A pipe shrine house at Mesa Verde is just south of Farview Village. And these are three of the nine clay pipes that were found in the, uh, apparently a shrine in the bottom of the kiva at uh, pipe shrine house. And this is a meteorite that was found in the same shrine. And it's about six inches across. So I often wondered, was Pipe Shrine House the Kiva there? It's very deep, very large. Was it uh, created from the impact crater from this meteorite? <laughs> this is another one of the artifacts that uh, Fuchs excavated from Pipe Shrine House. Uh, it's a dome, a sandstone dome. And Fuchs uh, attributed that it was covered in clay and then covered in uh, corn seeds. For use in some of the uh, ceremonies. 
This is an architectural stone from Pipe Strain House. It has a very Mesoamerican look. Uh, it was emplaced in the walls with this part sticking out, a little face on it. There's eight or 10 or 12 of these in their collection, and Mesa Verde has several of them in their collection too. So you can see there's lots of things back east for us to look at. One of the more interesting things I found in his correspondence, he had a large correspondence section, uh, correspondence back and forth between himself and Alfred Kidder. Uh, Kidder actually had requested permission from Fuchs to excavate Sun Temple in 1914. All I know is that Fuchs said, no, I don't think so, I'll do it myself. <laughs> this letter was from a fellow by the name of Charles Perlini. And it was a letter telling Fuchs about his uh, studies in Greek and Roman measurement systems and inquiring if there was any survey instruments found among uh, the sites in Mesa Verde. Fuchs commented that uh, he didn't, there weren't any real you know, survey instruments, but he did remember, I remember, well, I remember Howard seeing an implement for measuring the amplitude of the sun on the horizon used among the Hopi Indians some 20 years ago. And that would place those observations in 1897, when he was doing his ethnographic studies. We were not allowed to open the 1896-1897 uh, notebooks because they're incredibly fragile. They're acid paper. They said we would be able to open them if we ever digitized them to preserve them for history. So I would give my right arm to get into those notebooks and found, find out what kind of scientific instrument scientific astronomical instrument that Jukes was talking about. Uh, he had extensive notebooks of the uh, Lopatki area. He was, again, a great sketch artist. Recorded all kinds of information. Raw data. He recorded an awful lot of raw data that he then interpreted months, if not years, later. And it's those uh, interpretations that have been published, not for the raw data. There's a map of uh, Casa Grande Ruins' big house. He says that there's these two holes up in the top and that there was great interest in three small holes, two on the east wall, one on the north wall, in the central room that extended or continued through the outside wall. Uh, through one of the two holes on the eastern horizon can be seen. Were these connected with, I couldn't quite read that part, with horizon observations? Again. Cultural Astronomy, 1907. This is a document that I'm not sure who wrote this part of it. It was either A.M. Stephen or Fuchs himself. But this document describes uh, an Aboriginal land system, a petition of the Hopi people to the Washington chiefs, asking them to respect their land system land boundaries they have established, uh, water rights, rights to springs. And after Vernon's uh, talk last night, I'm beginning to wonder, could this document help in that quest? Associated with the document are 123 totemic signatures, what they call totemic signatures, signatures, pictographic signatures of the clan leaders uh, among Hopi villages. These are all done on tissue paper. It's reflected by A.M. Stephen, but Fuchs used them to later um, uh, uh, publish an article called The Tuesday and Totemic Signatures, in which he uh, listed them, illustrated them, and provided a guide as to their clan associations and meanings. Are we looking at a possible way of interpreting pictographs, petroglyphs? Are we looking at, uh, these are signatures. They signed a petition. Is it a legal document that could be used today? These are the kind of things that we have to consider and think about when we are looking at his material. One of the most important things that we have to remember is that Fuchs's manuscript and photograph and material collection represents thousands of items accessible only to those who travel to Washington, D.C. at great expense and with a defined research need. What I'm here today to do is to propose a digitizing project to bring a group of people together to learn what is in that collection. We have thousands of pages with raw data recorded on them, and no one knows what's there. So what we need to do is preserve the archival records, interpret 
and uh, use those uh, to access the records for educational use and to primarily use them to educate those societies that he studied. The project would involve scanning and digitizing his entire collection, while there are possibly the collections of some of the other major um, archaeologists and ethnographers from the time. Uh, at the time, in 2007, the collection was estimated to cost about $70,000 by the National Anthropological Archives to scan and digitize. 2007 was a long time ago in digital history, so the cost either could come down or go up. So we may have to find more about that. Many of the notebooks are very much too fragile to open unless they are being digitized as a method of preservation. And this is a way of permanently recording these things. Uh, trans we would need to transcribe the notebooks because there's an awful lot of sensitive information. And then we have to figure out a system of data storage and a means of access to these records. Interpreting the records, Fuchs's reports were based on his interpretations of observations. Like I said, months or years later, these interpretations were often incorrect or misinterpreted. The information in there was misappropriated. There's also a great deal of information that is unpublished. One of the things I found in uh, the collection was a uh, manuscript uh, for his uh, excavations of Square Tower House at Mesa Verde National Park. It was one of the part of the antiquities of the Mesa, National, Mesa Verde National Park series. It's never been published. This year is the 100th anniversary of the excavation repair of Sun Temple, or the Square Tower House. So it would be something you look at doing, publishing that information. Uh, these notebooks clearly contain culturally sensitive information. He made drawings. Many of you saw drawings of many of the Pagina masks. Pagina masks. And so a lot of the information in there maybe shouldn't be seen by some people. So we have to find a way to evaluate that. So we need a program of tribal consultation to assess the sensitivity of the data and initiate a program to make that data accessible. Uh, these records have educational value, and they have an uh, educational value to the Native American communities, uh, recover of lost information, information that may not be known anymore. Uh, the ethnographic research is useful for us, you know, use land use and ownership, interpretation of petroglyphs and, petroglyph, uh, petroglyphs and pictographs, and to provide a tool for archaeological research such as I did in assessing the architecture, its original condition, or the features were present at the time that we used for uh, astronomical observations. Were they really there? Did the stabilization site bring them into the existence? So one thing I think that's really important is that we do listen to the message. Mama is watching us. It is our responsibility as archaeologists and anthropologists to preserve this information. A lot of things happened in the past, but we have to move forward. Mom was watching to see if we take our responsibility seriously. These records are turning to dust as we speak. And we need to preserve them before they are completely gone and useless. Who knows what's in there? No one does. No one's read them all. Every time, I have a thousand pages of photocopies. I got them back there. Cosmos Mendelus original maps of Pueblo Benito before one stone was turned. There's just pages and pages and pages of material back there. Who knows what's so it's our responsibility to make sure. And if any of you are curious, that is a great horned owl sitting on a nest of eggs in Casa Grande Ruins National Monument. The big house, I was there working on an architectural uh, project. And I knew the owl was somewhere in the place. 
and I was doing uh, orthographic uh, photography. I had this 10 meter long pole with a camera mounted on top. I jacked it all the way up, turned it around, and that what was in my frame. <laughs> I said, quick, snap the picture. And I just like the eyes. <laughs> Look at the eyes. 